Hello again. We all know that in 1903 the Wright brothers did something, even if the actual details were a little bit hazy. Was it the first heavier than air flight or the first powered aircraft to get off the ground under its own steam? We'll return in a little while to see what Wilbur and Orville Wright actually did or didn't do. Throughout the 19th century, steam power ruled supreme. On land, steam locomotives annihilated distance, and in the ocean, steamships crossed the world in record time. It seemed only logical that it was a matter of time before the conquest of the skies began, and logically that too would be done by steam engines. In the 1830s, people were making model aircraft, some with wingspans 10 foot or more, which were powered by steam engines. This led in 1843 to the formation of the world's first airline, uh, the Aerial Transit Company. Money was raised for a company that promised to build full-sized airliners carrying passengers and freight, all powered by steam engines, of course. And brochures were produced showing what the world would look like once steam planes ruled supreme. Nothing came of this venture, but the idea of steam-powered aircraft had somehow taken hold in the 19th century and it captured the imagination of inventors all around the world. Felix du Temple built an aeroplane, the first aeroplane to take off under its own power in 1874. In Russia, uh, Alexander Muzhevsky managed the same thing a few years later in the 1880s. In 1890, Clement Ada in France constructed the bat-winged Eole which on October the 9th that year succeeded in taking off under its own power and flying for 165 feet. That's longer than the Wright brothers' first flight. The Eole may be seen here. It seemed that the time was right for serious work on the question of steam-powered flight. Hiram Maxim was an American inventor living in England. He'd made his fortune through machine guns. I'm sure some of us are familiar with the Maxim gun. It was, it, well, it made um, a lot of the colonization of Africa possible. The Maxim gun, its uh, capability could take on a whole tribe at once and kill them all. He decided that now he had the time and leisure and money, he would devote himself to the task of building a steam-powered aeroplane. He spent several years doing this and built an absolutely enormous aircraft. It weighed 8,000 pounds, which is about three and a half tons, and it had a wingspan of 125 feet. On July the 31st, 1894, Maxime was ready to unveil his work to the world. We can be perfectly sure what happened on that sunny day, nine years before the Wright brothers' first flight. Reporters from national newspapers, uh, including the Times, were present. There was also a glittering array of celebrities, including the Prince of Wales, who less than um, a decade later, would of course become King Edward VII of Britain. Another person who was present that day was H.G. Wells, the novelist. Maxim's aeroplane, with a crew of three, ran along rails to allow it to run smoothly before it took off. When the boiler was fired up, it bounded along the rails and then took to the air, flying at a height of between 8 and 12 feet for several hundred feet. The September 21st edition of the magazine Scientific American carried the following piece. On Tuesday, July the 31st, for the first time in the history of the world, 
a flying machine actually left the ground, fully equipped with engines, boiler, fuel, water and a crew of three persons. There it is, the first aeroplane in the world to take off and fly for a good distance. And there were loads and loads of witnesses there and photographs of it. I suppose the question we're all asking now is how come we've never heard of this? How is it we every school child knows about the Wright brothers' first flight and we've never heard of the very first powered aeroplane to fly? During the 1890s, another man working on powered flight was Samuel Pierpoint Langley, who happened to be the secretary of the Smithsonian Institute that um, runs various museums in the United States. He built quarter scale models that are very large things and they flew beautifully in 1896 when they were tested. The full size ones that carried uh, people didn't work quite so well. In 1903, the Wright brothers made short hops in the flyer, their first aeroplane. Nobody was interested anymore in Maxine by that time. The Wright brothers, by the way, their achievement was very simple. It was controlled flight. Once they took off by twisting the wings, it was possible to alter the direction of flight. It was a primitive method, but they could actually steer their plane in flight. The trouble began when the Wright brothers lent their first aeroplane, that's the flyer, to the Smithsonian to put on display. The Wright brothers were credited with having made the first controlled flight, but because Langley was the secretary of the Smithsonian, the Smithsonian felt obliged to give him first place. And they had one of his model aircraft there with a board claiming that it was the first powered aircraft capable of controlled flight, which really wound up the Wright brothers. In the end, they got so annoyed with the Smithsonian that they took the flyer from the Smithsonian and lent it to the London Science Museum, where it stayed for decades. The only way the Smithsonian could get it back again into America was by signing a secret agreement with the Wright brothers in which they promised never to investigate the history of flight. And I'd like to quote from, uh, this is none of my books about steampunk. Let me quote from the tr secret agreement that the Smithsonian signed. Neither the Smithsonian Institution or its successors, nor any other agency, bureau or facilities administered for the United States of America by the Smithsonian Institution or its successors, shall publish or permit to be displayed a statement or label in connection with or in respect of any aircraft model or design of earlier date than the Wright aeroplane of 1903, claiming in effect that such aircraft was capable of carrying a man under its own power in controlled flight. This means that for the last 70 years the Smithsonian has been obliged to avoid saying that anybody fly an aeroplane before the Wright brothers and this goes some way to explain why everyone's heard of the Wright brothers now and hardly any of you are likely to have heard of Harman Maxim's first powered flight in 1894.